Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. So this week we are the 25th of July 2023. Last week we didn't have a weekly meeting because it was holiday for a lot of us. So today will be a two weeks milestone conclusion. Next weekly meeting should be next week, the 1st of August. As far as I can tell, everyone should be there. Um, so who do we have today? We have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waite, Stéphane Merle, and Bruno Verarden. Looks like Kevin isn't there. I hope he's doing, his back is feeling better. Um, let's get started with announcements. So today's weekly did not happen, but it was expected. <laughs> Um, yes, because tomorrow, as we'll uh, explain uh, uh, later, we'll have a security advisory on the Jenkins core, and so the main branch is locked. That has been announced publicly yesterday, I think, on the mailing list. So that's why we try to not publish a core release before a security release to avoid anything going wrong. Um, so weekly, no release. Uh, no release today as planned. See below. Okay. Uh, do you have other announcement, folks? I don't have any. Except tomorrow security release, but that's part of the calendar. Okay. So next weekly should happen next week, 1st of August. I don't remember the, the number that should be 4, 1, 18 or 19. I don't remember. Uh, so to, tomorrow's is 4, 16. Next weekly will be 4, 17. Uh, 4, 16 tomorrow. Ah, yeah. Then 4, 17 uh, next is first of August, right? Cool. Thanks, Mark. Next LTS. So uh, two dot four oh one dot three tomorrow. Four oh one dot three tomorrow. Two dot four hundred fourteen dot one, August twenty. Four. Sorry, I, I missed for 14. Dot, dot one on August 23rd. So, yeah, perfect. Uh, for third. Correct, 23. So, okay, I need to, to train my, my ears to English after the holidays again, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So, uh, Mike, I bon, had Vente heard... tre, vente tre, isn't that true? Vente toi, vente toi, vente toi. Oh, okay. So it's sorry. difficult. Yeah, yeah uh, but I heard uh, people were thinking also of the four one five to become the LTS. But finally, uh, your decision is made, and it will be four one four. Okay. Well, so the the discussions were were really good about that topic because 416 will include a security fix. It must be backported. And there was uh, there was an issue that James Nord detected that will re result in a backport as well. So so there will be some wow. backports to 414.1. That's good. We're we're really proud that people are finding things that that need to be backported. That's healthy. Oh, I, I missed this discussion. Thanks for folks. This Okay, so that need we will have to check a bit more the change log to see if we are not impacted. Yeah, so what will happen is the the fixes will be applied to weeklies, and then as we get to the August 9th release candidate date, those fixes will be backported from weekly to the four one four fourteen dot one or four fourteen stable branch. Okay, so August will be. Uh... A busy week, a busy month. Then, <laughs> um, so the announcement: we tomorrow we will have a high severity security release as announced. 
Yeah, 26th of July, tomorrow, confirmed. Tomorrow. So that means since it's uh, uh, tomorrow, we should try as much as possible to not release anything on release CI Jenkins IO. And we will, um, so I need someone to help or prepare. That can be me, but that can be someone else. But we need someone to take care of uh, opening the, um, the usual uh, uh, status Jenkins IO uh, message because CI Jenkins IO will be down during the, the restart. And we also need, uh, so unless someone volunteer, I will take care of uh, doing this, the health check tomorrow morning in Europe and report back to the security team saying, okay, all system are green, we can proceed. Which mean, okay, so, so we need status. I'm happy to open the status pull request. I'm not willing to wake up in the early hours of the morning. To, I'll, I'm happy to open that tonight. Uh, okay. I'm not willing to wake up in the early hours of the morning to do the things that you need to do tomorrow morning. Okay. Let's check the platform. Um, Stefan, is it okay for you if we pair on doing the ILS checks tomorrow morning? Uh, with pleasure to, to make sure that I know the process, yes. Report to Gensec team before. Damien. Ah. Um, okay. Uh, that's all we have. Then we will have to follow uh, the updates, update all the images. There will be an issue, and yeah, and we'll deploy. So the goal is to have. I uh, propose the challenge tomorrow, end of day in Europe. We will have upgraded all of our controller. And when I say all, it's all because but. Release lines are covered by the security. Looks good for you, no question. Uh, next major event, I don't know when I haven't tracked this. If you have any next major event where you know some team member will be present, uh, I don't mind you sharing it. I don't know what are the plans. Mark, do you have uh, events in mind? Um, let's see. September, no, nothing we should put there. September DevOps World Tour start begins September, October, and I think even into November, but that can be listed later separately. Okay. So let's get started on, on the tasks that have been done during the past two weeks. Um, so we had a user we need we was it by the anti-spam system so we created the account manually uh i've closed the issue but as Hervé mentioned earlier today that's worth it checking the username on the data log uh, logs the data dog logs of the account app to see what is the error message um, uh, that could have been triggered the anti-spam the goal will be to be sure what is the reason why the anti-spam system blocked that person? Let's check that, the dog. Logs. Hervé, uh, are you okay to check the logs for that user or, or one of the other? Because there has been also other issues with this this week. Is that okay for you to check to check this? For account tap, even if account has been created. Okay. Uh, the goal is just to be sure that we don't have a regression in the account app or a new kind of issue that we haven't uh, foreseen before. Um, hmm? No question on that topic? Okay, for an announcement, so the goal was, uh, that was a request from Alex about uh, this course, Community Jenkins IO uh, setup. He wanted a new category and asked for a bit more permission on the token. So that has been done. The administrator, any administrator of the community discourse can do it. I'm not at least given an IR administrator and Olivier Vernon. I don't know for the others, uh, but everything was done. So unless you have question, I am going to move forward. Okay. 
uh, rename pipeline log from the cloud watch plugin developers. Wow, that's quite the pipeline. So, uh, so, so thanks for the people who took care of that. That was renaming a repository on Jenkins CI organization. And I assume the corresponding change on CI Jenkins IO. Next topic, cannot download the Jenkins for war file and plugins. I don't remember the reason of the error for that user. Okay, so that person had issues due to their internal firewall, most probably due to the public IP changes, I guess, that happened on the, during the Kubernetes upgrade two weeks ago. Or maybe not, but that will be one of the use cases where since we changed the public IP, the firewall are, up, are keeping the, the old IP that has been trashed as okay and the new IP isn't on the system yet. That's why we need to take care of communicating and avoiding changing the, these IPs. Say the guy who broke the production. <laughs> Um, Jira, uh, you, you were testing your ability to rebuild everything. That was yeah, that's what from the from zero to fully working production in less than a day. Uh, finally, the last closed item. Oh, thanks, Mark and team for taking care of that. That was Jira setup. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so I understand that, Mark. Uh, you held on that setting to keep the sanity of our users. Is that uh, is my understanding will, correct? Uh, it was it was self preservation because I hated the default <laughs> as much as everybody else did. So that that was the craziest default. Uh, what, what? Yeah. So I agree with Basel. It was it was pushing me over the edge having to put up with it. So <laughs> thanks for taking care of this one. Uh, we had five issues about closed as not planned. So user trying to create a Jenkins account on accounts Jenkins IO, which makes sense on the paper, but that was for testing Jenkins or it's by the anti-spam system. It's not always clear. So thanks Harvey for taking care of this uh, or and Mark. Um, I think it's related to the, we have at least two cases with the anti-spam system, as far as I can tell. We might have more, so let's check if there is something wrong or what is the reason. My guess is uh, public IP, but I'm, I don't remember exactly. So let's see. Any question on these topics? Okay, so work in progress. Most of the work that has been done during the past two, two weeks uh, were on these tasks. Some are almost closable. Uh, let's take them one by one. So a report about the upgrade to Kubernetes 1.25 because we didn't meet last week. So during two, during the beginning of that milestone, we plan to upgrade Kubernetes 1.25 with one cloud provider per day. Uh, everything went properly until the last one, which is public. Okay, so the upgrade in itself went very well. But as part of the upgrade, the change of the node pool combined to the particular network setup we had uh, made the cluster in a, in a state where it wasn't able to reach some IPs, causing some mayhem. And when we try to fix it, uh, a combination of bad luck and uh, not enough uh, reading and taking time led to cluster full destruction. So we had to recreate the cluster from scratch at the moment during the day. So first positive thing is that all the work that Hervé and Olivier did during the past years on the public cluster with automation and as code show that we we're able to recreate it from scratch, including restoring the LDAP backup I have to admit I was quite freaked out by the deletion of the LDAP persistent volume. Uh, so the cluster was recreated. And as part of that recreation, we realized that the public IP were changed automatically. So that uh, that is a subsequent topic that uh, thanks for from team, we were able to see we could have a long-term solution. On short term, we have locked in the Azure API, the current public IP. So they cannot be deleted, even if we do the same operation, uh, deleting the cluster and recreating it. 
the under the hood, it's because we have some kind of namespaces in Azure API, name resource groups. And when you create an AKS cluster, there uh, you need two resource groups. One that you define where the control plane is created and some top level resources and the public IP should have been on that one that you manage. And the second one is created and managed by the cluster itself, where the node pools and the virtual machine and the associated resources are created within. When you delete the cluster, the cluster cascade deletes the child resource group. And we were under the impression that the public IP must have been on the same resource group as node pool. And as Tim showed, we have ways of doing of having the public IP on another resource group with the correct annotation on Kubernetes setup, which we didn't know back in time. So when we deleted the cluster, the public IP were deleted. So they have been created on the same resource group because we had to recreate the cluster as close as possible as the former one. But now we have an upcoming issue tracked on a subsequent topic that could allow us to not only keep the lock on the public IP, but also move them to a proper resource group to avoid blocking deletion of the cluster in the future. So thanks, Hervé, and thanks, team, for pointing these elements. Thanks for the help, Mark and Hervé, on that topic. Consequence is that we had to change the public IP. A blog post has been published about this to communicate to end users. Uh, and this issue is closable, except that I need to open the issue to plan the 1.26 with the date time and linking this one. That's the one last mile. All the other improvement that we've seen have their own issue to be tracked because it's outside the topic of the update, but these are things that we should work on to improve the next updates or the next production outage. Is there any question, things I could have forgotten? Not clear on that topic. In the in the postmortem, you had put back Javadoc to RM64 node pool. Yes. Was that related to the upgrade to 125? Uh, no, it's because during the cluster recreation, the Javadoc service wasn't triggering a scale up of the cluster. Maybe it's because we didn't add enough time or I didn't diagnose and I started by changing the, the node pool label to force it back to Intel. Okay. We recreated everything. It was Friday and the next Monday or Tuesday, I fixed the problem by moving it back to IRM64 after scaling manually like you did the first time. Okay. My guess Sorry. it's it's because I I didn't wait I didn't took the next, the required time waiting a bit more would have helped but in any case we had to rush so that's why. Okay, good good. No problem. Thank you. Um so yeah, good good point. Good question. But it should be in the same state as you left it when you go, went to vacations. Um, I don't have anything else on Kubernetes 1.25. Anything else for you folks? Okay, next one. Migrate updates Jenkins IO to another cloud. So for this one, during the past two weeks, we removed all the Oracle Cloud resources that Stefan and I created uh, months ago for that topic, because we decided all together uh, during the beginning of July that we won't use Oracle Cloud for that service. Hervé, can you give up, can you share the, the status since you are going to take that issue as we discussed? Can you give us a summary? Yes, so we intend to create a Docker image uh, with uh, an uh, Apache server in it. Um, create a service on public KTS cluster uh, with a uh, custom volume to mount uh, every HTA access files generated by the update center script. This script is triggered by the build on trusted.ci.jenkins.io to update uh, the version 
in the HT access reduction. So the plan is to retrieve this uh, this uh, access, uh, put them on the Apache two, uh, Apache two server configuration uh, running on the public KTS cluster, and uh, um, redirect with HTTP to the content stored in uh, R two Cloudflare R two buckets. A good benefit of Cloudflare R2 is that they have um, uh, we, they can um, deploy a bucket uh, in China, so this will help for uh, user. And uh, we can also uh, use this uh, with mirror bits to have a better location for your user later. And yes, the main uh, reason we are using R2 from Cloudflare is that there, there are no egress fees. And since it's one of our main uh, bandwidth consumer service, it's a big, uh, big win for us. Yeah, I forgot to. Yeah. Oh, you mentioned the, the two. Two yeah, images. The, HA, the high availability, I forgot, but yeah. no problem. Do and we... the read only HTA docs will be also another benefit of having this service like that. Do we have an agreement already from Cloudflare to allow us as an open source project, or is that in progress? Uh, for now, their free tier is more than enough for conducting more tests. Then we will have to assess if we are in their free tier with our normal usage. If not, we we can uh, we can um, uh, not subscribe but uh, um, fill uh, their their uh, open uh, source program uh, form. Uh, anyway, we can we can do that. I think it can be beneficial for both Jenkins and Cloudflare. The goal is to be sure that uh, we don't have any technical blocker, because if we start the discussion with them and if we realize that we cannot use them, that will make no sense. Right. But good reminder. Um, longer term, we so that's a discussion that we had the China projection. Right now, we will. We will start with only one bucket in the US and we will start moving the service because the main goal, as a reminder, is to get that service away from AWS to avoid paying five to seven K per month in egress fees. Once we have enabled that, we can think if we can use R2 um, uh, Cloudflare or if we keep the at least the pattern of HTTP redirector meaning a Jenkins controller starts, connect to update Jenkins.io web service, which redirect them to somewhere. And that somewhere serve the, uh, the, the four or five megabyte JSON file, which is parsed and used to then download plugins, core and tools. If we have the, so the question we had two weeks ago was, is Jenkins, able to follow HTTP redirection for that? And the answer found by Hervé is yes, because we have all of these HT access that he mentioned that are generated by Trusted. So that allows us to keep control of the domain name, update Jenkins IO and update Jenkins .org, the certificate and the redirection rules. We keep that control and then we trigger HTTP redirection so that the real egress bandwidth is served by a service where we don't pay, but we keep the control of, this, of the initial service, which is not a reverse proxy. Otherwise, we would still keep serving the content and paying egress fees. That's the subtle difference. That's not an easy one. Considering that pattern, we can think about improving the life of our user all across the world. We have China because that's where it's the most visible today. 
but that could be improvement for everyone, we could use the same, we could use a mirror redirector like we have for get Jenkins IO. Except in that case, we host, manage, and fill the content of the mirrors between codes. Meaning we could think about having a bucket on the US East and a bucket on China, on the Air2 Cloudflare China network. And then we could instantiate a new mirror bit service for update Jenkins IO that say, oh, I see you are located in China. So the redirect will be on the update center JSON served inside the China network. But the problems we would have with the existing service is that we don't manage the mirrors. For instance, our own university, we have OSU OSL, so we cannot control when we update for real life the update JSON file, which is a problem for security uh, advisories. In that case, that will be another mirror bit instance that will allow us to project the proper update JSON file on the location we seek, but we control filling these elements. So trusted CI today generate the content and then run an airsync to the virtual machine. In that scenario in the long-term future, Trusted CI would generate the content and run AWS S3 CP or a local CP on the file system and copy to all the location where it's needed. And then we can update on the mirror. On the mirror redirector service. We can even add a CDN on top of that uh, to to manage the one that are not that mm. cannot have any any. That you one is. Produce, a... Yeah. Introduce some lags in. We, yeah. Depend the, uh, depend of the CDN. Yeah. The egress bandwidth, the cost that will generate, yeah, and the ability the of the CDN of to pre cache. Yeah. But yeah, that could also. But, alleviate, you can but keep, if the you can yeah. keep everything and use it as a last uh, solution not to not to propagate mm. everything and to be close of geolocalization yes but you depend on how the cdn uh, resolve yeah. the log geolocation and currently fastly doesn't uh, have anything in china so yeah, that's yeah, why I, if I, we I, control the mirrors we can have a, a mix of all of these exactly. while that's the cdn doesn't Okay. I, I like the way that we handle that and in last resource, if we cannot have the bucket close of, of the client, we, we still have the ability, depending on the price and the and the system, to use a CDN as a last solution. Because Absolutely. we got the because we got the solution. In fact, we are to handling that. With our own mirrors to project on different network. Okay, do you have other question on that topic or does it look good for you, something not clear? Okay, so that's the main priority for Hervé because that's quite the cost and we want to get rid of that virtual machine. So that's the, our new top priority now. Uh, next issue, artifact caching proxies and reliable. If I understand correctly, that issue is Closable. We are waiting for Basil just to do a final validation since it has been tested, merged one or two weeks ago. So we use the new AC, the ACP artifact caching proxy on the whole ATH builds now. So that should decrease a bit more what we download from Gfrog Artifactory. Is that correct, Hervé, or did I miss something? Thanks for taking care of that. So. That also underlines something hidden is that now we don't have any more overlap issues and we have almost uh, removed everything. We just have a few elements. I will come on this a bit later, but that proved that the network of the virtual machine we use on CI Jenkins IO as for today is now stable enough to sustain ACP. Closable waiting for final confirmation from developers. Thanks, Ari, for this one. We have an issue, Jenkins server is unable to download plugin from updates Jenkins IO. Uh, just, okay. So the user seems to have issues connecting to the Aachen University and the mirrors is redirecting them. Both Mark and I have at least have 
check that it's not a problem on our mirror or on the Aachen University. The files are there. We can access them on multiple ISPs. So it looks like they have an issue. So I've invited them to contact directly the administrator of the Aachen University network. So they could check if they are uh, denied, if their requests are denied on Aachen or if their own internal firewall is blocking. I, I don't know, but there is nothing we can do to help them outside this. So if it's okay for everyone, I will keep that issue open, but I, I won't put it on the next milestone. Is that okay for you? And I'm adding a personal reminder that I should check for this in one or two weeks and close it if we don't have any answer. Uh, so users have to contact Aachen University. Nothing else from us. Okay. We cannot do any patch on the mirror or director because it's based on their geolocation. So there is nothing we can do about that, as far as I can tell. Issue while creating Jenkins infrastructure account. I guess, Hervé, that's the one you mentioned this morning. Oh, no, it's a new one. OK, so we have a potential new contributor. So we have to take care of this one because the user want to create their account. Um, I've assigned myself this issue, Hervé. Are you okay to assign this yourself since uh, we, uh, I asked you for checking the logs? And do you mind creating their account to unblock them on short term? On the long term, yes. we keep that issue open to keep the log research uh, uh, as a night, as a working item. Is that okay for you? Yes. Cool, thanks. Uh, I don't yes. think we have a problem. I see uh, 80 warning for the last uh, 15 days, which seems normal for me, since there are not only account uh, issue, but uh, other stuff in this warning. I, yeah. Okay. Long term, let's check the, the logs to see if anything is weird. With account up. Okay. Uh, issue about ATH builds become unresponsive. So there have been multiple factors for this one. Uh, there has been a regression in the ATH itself, but that has been fixed. And still, uh, issues have been cooked by. Um, by gems. So thanks for the pointer from Hervé. We conclude as a team that we could temporarily disable the spot mode for the agents. And we will do it for the upcoming week until next milestone. And we'll see if it changed the behavior of the ATH build. If it doesn't change the behavior, that means we have to search of the root cause because some elements feel like the same problem we have with the bomb builds as if some threads were stuck while trying to garbage collect to manage the agent connection. Also, we have changed from SSH to inbound agent for these agents. That could be a cause. Maybe the inbound serialization protocol is weaker than the SSH protocol for reconnection or supporting the network issues. And finally, um, if the spot instance improve, then we will have to study carefully the size of the instances, because as pointed by Hervé, we chose that instance size because it's nine times cheaper with a low eviction rate. But now that will be clearly way more expensive. So we have to check if without spots, is it the best fit for this workload? So we need to check the metrics in Datadog and reconsider the choice we made, which is not a problem, but that's why I propose a one week period and we have to test the ATH as much as possible. Is that clear? Does it make sense for you? Or do you have question or objection on that proposal? Okay. So Hervé, you've merged the, the thing. Can I just let you uh, comment on the issue and then we will have to wait. Is that okay for you? Yes. Disabled for one week. Let's check the results. Uh, 
there is a request mark for this allow, it's a Jira request. Uh, oh, okay, no. Uh, I can take care of this one. I might need help, Mark. Uh, just in any case, I might ask you for help tomorrow if it's okay for you. Yeah, I'm I'm not a high skills Jira administrator, but I'm happy to attempt it together. Mm -hmm. It's it it's only a category, so that one should be easy. But if I'm blocked, I will ask for help. So I'm taking this issue. Okay. Next issue is Jenkins CI failing for Jenkins plugin after a change in Jenkins file. So I'm a bit annoyed by this one, to be quite honest. We discussed it. It's the third issue, as far as I can tell, from that plugin maintainer. They say they have a problem. We work different elements to fix their problem, and we don't have any feedback until three, two or three weeks later where they open a new issue. Uh, so there might be, as, as pointed by Tim, there might be bug in the GitHub scanning system from CI Jenkins. Are you? Is it misconfiguration, edge case, a bug on the plugin itself? I'm not really sure. But since this user haven't carefully followed the repository permission updater uh, elements, they, are, they have managed their, their whole system. And because that plugin was a fork, migrated to our organization, there might be a combination of parameters that will help us a lot if the user was responsive, which they are not. So I propose that we keep that issue open or we can close it. If we keep it open, we have to tell the user, hey, please, we need your help because it's a word case and you, we, you need to be responsive or we cannot help you because it's a bit infra, it's a bit uh, Jenkins CI organization administrator, CI Jenkins CI administrator. I, I mean, it's, it's it's cross team. So yeah, we need we need them to help. So a uh, question: I had an experience today that might align with this. Okay, so mm -hmm. so could you scroll up to the top to see the description? Was it that that they had permissions on ci.jenkins.io that they didn't have on github or the other direction it was that they had permissions it was that ci.jenkins.io did not realize they were a an trusted a, a trusted person yeah. okay so that's different than what i had i had a case where where github thought i was not not trusted or depend about thought i was not trusted but then i was allowed to merge the pull request myself so my my situation oh. is different thanks nothing to do with this okay uh, yeah so that one yeah the suggestion from team makes sense but we need the user to answer so is that okay if we keep it open and we don't expect the jenkins infra team to work on it unless there is something that points to ci jenkins io setup but i mean that's the only user, so there is something really agey here. I guess, uh, I guess team, team had the good feeling, but yeah, I I don't see anything we can do to help them more than what we did. Do you agree, or do you see something else that we could do to help here? Okay, I will keep that issue open, and I will put it on the next milestone, and we'll see. It, I propose the time the TTL will be next week. If we don't have any feedback, we close it saying, okay, we need a feedback and we need you to be responsive when yeah, we try you, to you help. Ping, you ping them before you don't wait just a week, you just ping them and then yeah. wait a week. Yeah, we add a message now telling them, please, we need your feedbacks. And then uh, next week we will close it if no answer back. Um, next issue. Assess artifactory bandwidth reduction option. Mark, can you give us a quick summary on what changed during the past two weeks on that topic? Yeah, so had a, a discussion with James Nord where he identified a, a very rapidly implementable technique to reduce bandwidth use without requiring a release of all POM files and without requiring adoption of new POM file releases for everyone. And so I've scheduled a session for tomorrow to discuss it in more depth. It's described in this in this issue ticket there. The idea is we just password protect our cache of Maven Central. That's the only thing we password protect on this effort. But that is by 10x 
larger data volume than any other repository that we cache. And so, so that one change, but because that change is, because that repository is automatically included as a fallback by Maven, our stopping caching it will just cause the builds to revert to asking Maven Central for the, the, the artifacts, which is where everyone else asks anyway. Oh, we don't have to say go to the, the, the original main one. It's automatic. Right. Awesome. And, and now that only works for exactly one repository. And it happens to be a major high visibility repository. It doesn't work for JGit. It doesn't work for many others. But for this one, it just so happens that the data volume from Maven Central in our, in our measurements is 10x greater than the next largest mirrored repository. So, so it's, it's a very interesting choice. If this works, we should implement it. Uh, the question then from the security team is, or the question we'll breach with the security team tomorrow is, is it okay that we're relying on Maven Central for artifacts and that we are requiring ourselves to pass through potentially other repositories on the search process? And, and immediately it will just be repo, repo.jenkinsci.org falling back to central. But if JFrog requires more than that, then we have to put intermediate steps and there's some danger there on supply chain. So feels feels comfortable, feels reasonable. We'll discuss it further tomorrow. Okay, sorry, I have maybe a dumb question, but you were questioning the security of relying on the Maven Central because something could happen between us and Maven Central. Am I right? No, not not so much that because we're we're talking to Maven Central through an SSL secured HTTPS connection. So it's it's not that someone could get between us and them in the data transfer. It's rather that there is a search order which is used to search first this repository, then this one, then this one. And Maven Central is always the last one searched. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the benefit for us today is our cache satisfies all requests. But the problem is that means we have a full cache of Maven Central sitting inside our repositories that other people are using without, without justification. Yep. yep. So, uh, sorry, I have another dumb question, which may be linked. Uh, so you say that it would be password protected now, from now on, okay? So who will use the password? I mean, uh, will our Jenkins plugins build you that password so that it doesn't change anything? Or will we also yes. use for the yes. Jenkins build plugins, the Maven yes. Central, which means that our builds could take some more time? Or I, build I, would... I... Go ahead. What I understood is our build will still use our own cache, but this cache won't be available for anyone else. Okay. Well, the so... password, the password, be careful, that password will be hidden inside the ACP, the caching proxy that I have built, which means CI Jenkins IO will only use the password to reach the ACP. So mm -hmm. CI Jenkins IO user will never be able to see the password and get it in any way. It will be hidden somewhere else, which is not reachable. They will only be able to get the password to connect to ACP. Today, that means they can reuse it at home and use ACP from outside, but we should quickly shift to ACP restricted only to CI Jenkins IO agents. Okay, much clearer, thank you be used with the as fallback. Um, one thing, Mark, uh, we uh, be careful about the tests suggested by James. We need to do that test as a first layer, mm -hmm. but we still need to plan a brownout when we will enable authentication of the um, only on the upstream repo Maven Central inside the, the tree, because that uh, the mirrors uh, will have a different HTTP answer than when it will ask for a password. And right. the fallback behavior could change if we have 
if it receives a different answer from the remote. The whole search fallback system. Uh, I'm sure James is absolutely true and that should be enough. We need to run that test, but we still have to anticipate weird fallback behaviors. A wholehearted agreement there. We, we must not implement this without a brownout first. And we may need multiple brownouts to be confident that it's behaving the way we expect. Absolutely. It's no question in my mind that once we get agreement on the concept, brownout is the next step. And, and then we, we, and we, we define, I think, carefully what the things we want to test during the brownout. Because do we need to make artifact caching proxy changes in order to do the brownout? Or can we run it unmodified? Those kind of, those kind of questions. Okay, thanks. In our infra for reliability. But password is hidden inside ACP, not inside CI Jenkins IO. Okay, do you have other questions, things to, to write here? Cool. So that's good news. I don't say we shouldn't have a highly available LDAP, but at least we won't be forced into doing it in last minute with the, if that if this is working. ATH mm -hmm. uh, builds failing due to denied outbound request during test. So that one is a consequence of CI Jenkins IO virtual machine being migrated to a new virtual machine two three weeks ago. And we also moved the agents that were changed. They change region, subnet, and connection uh, connection method from SSH to inbound. So as we saw, we can use ACP and everything works perfectly. But on certain tests of the ATH, um, a protocol name, uh, a network protocol name HKP used for using for retrieving public GPG key from public key servers. Uh, they are used on some of the Docker files of the ATH. And the builds were failing because I admit that I've been a bit paranoid and the firewall rules on the new network for this agent is now forbidding every, everything by default except some few rules. So I expect the agent on CI Jenkins IO to only use outbound HTTP or HTTPS. Eventually we could think about SSH for GitHub to GitHub.com public IPs or eventually some GitLabs. But the goal is to be sure that we don't have agent trying to do weird things. It's not absolute, of course, one can, can forge a, a weird thing through, I mean, I've used SSH through the port 443 to bypass firewall rules in my previous organization. So I don't say it's impossible, but defense in depth states that, yeah, by default, if you don't need it, forbid it. Um, also, the big deprecated message, please avoid using public JPG key servers, is a message that should say, hey, let's avoid using HKP protocol. And instead, let's copy the public JPG key next to the Docker file and use it. So all of these information have been passed. Um, I need to check, but that one is closable. Any question, things unclear, suggestion, objection on the wall, firewall, HKP, ATH thing? Okay, next issue, AWS Summer 2023. I've closed the previous issue that was spring 2023 because we already were able to decrease the bill. So now here is the usage of June 2023. That's a follow-up issue. The next actionable we have are, we have four for that summer. So for me, summer is until middle September. So for the upcoming month and a half, more or less, we will have to work on these four issues. That's a kind of epic issues. Uh, one is what Hervé described. Uh, that's moving away the AWS machine to decrease the outbound bandwidth costs. That's the update Jenkins uh, 
the update center index move to Cloudflare and somewhere else. As you can see on the diagrams, that's the, the data transfer out bytes. And I haven't given more details, it's on the other issues, but it's only updates Jenkins IO virtual machine. Please note that also, I will mention that, we also have the PKG origin Jenkins IO, but since that one is backed by Fastly as CDN in front, that shouldn't be uh, a egress uh, consumer. That one shouldn't generate a lot of outbound bandwidth because Fastly protect us. So that one should also migrate to Azure. That's a separate topic, but part of that bullet. The goal is to decrease by, uh, by almost half the AWS billing when we will have finished with that machine. That one is the, the biggest one. Also, we have two quick wins. More, we also have two virtual machines for the services usage Jenkins IO and census Jenkins IO that could be moved as inside Kubernetes or as virtual machine we need to evaluate for both services, but these one are running on AWS and there is no need for that. Since the Azure billing is now way below the limit, we can afford moving these machines and that will make us less coupled to AWS. Mark, we have a question. Do you remember what is the purpose of the service Census Jenkins IO? Because we are not sure. I don't remember, but I can do some <coughs> research here really quickly and do some checks. No, no worries then. It's, it was just if you had it in mind. So that I means for the whole team, we want to check census uh, Jenkins IO. Uh, usage is quite easy. So there is already an issue open for that since years by Olivier himself. So I think we can start working on this too, and then we will uh, evaluate census. Thanks very also for the issue about the S3 artifact uh, caching. As we saw two weeks ago, uh, yeah, basically with the S3 artifact manager and CI Jenkins IO, we don't, we should not let the plugin delete artifact when the build are rotated for a lot of reasons. Uh, so we disabled that behavior, which is the default and recommended behavior. So that means we need to create a garbage collector system in the bucket where the CI Jenkins IO artifact are stored. And that artifact, should, we should define the rules such as, A, delete any artifact that is older than one month, for instance. The goal for us is not to have bad surprise in one year and a half with the AWS billing. Right now, we are still around half a dollar per day. So 15 to 20 bucks per month. But yeah, given the rate of increase, we need to garbage collect that as soon as possible. So yeah, these are the issues. So I propose that we keep that top level issue on the milestone. We have the update Jenkins IO work and then we will consider the others. Is that okay for you? If anyone has time, you can start the other tiny issues. But right now, the first one is the top priority because the most visible. Any question, objection, things unclear, suggestion on that topic? Cool. Next one, Matomo GitHub Docker repo. That one, we didn't do anything. Um, two parallel tasks. We are going to work on this, this milestone. We have one task, which will be creating a MySQL manage instance in Azure, like we have a PostgreSQL uh, instance. Stefan, are you okay to work with this on with me? We pair. Yes, uh, yes. Why with me? Because uh, you need to change eventually machine reconfigure. You might have a laptop issue. So I propose that we tomorrow pair. the new one, but the time I have to set it up. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. That's why to avoid putting pressure, we pair. I work and you dictate. Is that okay In for you? You just don't want to say that you love to, to work with me, but okay. Absolutely. Unless, uh, Hervé, you want to bear with Stefano with me or take that topic, of course. Uh, but yeah, the goal is this one. And the second parallel task is um, take all the elements that gave in created, see if the Docker image is built or if it's missing something like the proper pipeline function on InfraCI, the proper 
permission on the Docker Hub, check all the elements until we have the a valid image published uh, on each tag creation on the repository. Ubuntu 22.04 upgrade campaign. Everything now is Ubuntu 22, except Puppet Machine, which is still on 20.04. So no emergency. We have two years in front of us. Um, and we cannot move it to 22. That's why. Unless we switch from Puppet Enterprise to Puppet Open Source in version seven. Today we have a Puppet 6 Enterprise and we will have to upgrade it in any case to the seven or even eight lines. The pull requests are piling that we cannot merge about on the Puppet module because they require Puppet 7. Oh. So Puppet 7 will be a topic to treat in August. I don't think we should focus on this on the upcoming milestone and defer during the month of August if it's okay for all of you. And the second machine nuts in Ubuntu 22.04 is the PKG slash update virtual machine that we mentioned earlier. So the work for that issue is VM PKG. So Hervé is already working on the update center part. And on my side, I've started studying and I don't mind anyone helping me or pairing or taking over. I don't, uh, it, I'm interested, but I don't mind sharing or delegating. Um, the goal is to move the whole package generation, including the 500 gigabyte of packages to be moved from AWS to Azure. And so the process that we use on release CI to build the core and package the core of Jenkins should be able to run all its step locally inside the agent instead of one of the step being a remote SSH command. Once it's moved on that agent, we can take care of changing the Docker image from Ubuntu 18 to Ubuntu whatever or whatever system with the proper tooling. But right now, we need to migrate that data. That's the first step. And that will require moving the PKG origin Jenkins IO service to a new Apache service on public gates. And the same idea as what Hervé described for update Jenkins IO that will split the Apache that we have currently on the virtual machine, which has two virtual hosts mainly, in two different services with high availability inside our AKS cluster. That one is low traffic because backed by Fastly, as I mentioned earlier. So the risk for the cost is, is almost nothing. However, in terms of maintainability, that will clearly a huge value. Any question? No? Okay, so update Jenkins IO service by Hervé and pkg.gin.jenkins.io by at portal. One last work in progress is Linux Foundation status page. I have no idea what this topic is about and I need help, Mark, or Hervé. So it's that um, Daniel Beck asked a question that needs to go to the Linux Foundation. And I've got to raise the question to them. Uh, as far as I know, as far as I can tell, the issue is absolutely resolved. What Daniel's question was is, does the Linux Foundation for future cases need to be sure that their caching system does not cache too aggressively? Okay. So so cache, the cache duration, cache lifespan, cache time to live may need to be reduced. And I had seen something similar minutes after the, or in the hour after the Linux Foundation had brought issues at Jenkins.io back online. But this re report from this user was a day later. I, neither he nor Daniel, neither Daniel nor I could duplicate it, but it's worth the question to LF. I'll, okay. I have the action to do that. Okay, cool. So that means we can keep you assigned to the issue, move it Correct. to the next milestone and wait from the feedback. Cool. Yes. Thanks for the clarification. Part my takes care of it. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. So in the list of new items, 
whether to be triaged or to be considered for the upcoming milestone. Um, Hervé open, uh, open topic of moving the public IPs of the cluster that we mentioned earlier, the IPs that were deleted. So we have that issue to track the first testing that we can move this public IP from a resource group to another based on the documentation and element we have. So the goal will be to create some Dumi's IPs, create a Dumi load balancer in the cluster and see if we can move them without breaking the load balancer. Uh, once we know what is the effect of moving the public IPs and updating the load balancer annotation so it knows where is the new IP located, once we have done that and we know the behavior on the Dumi load balancer, if it, we can plan the operation of the current public IP, that might be a brownout, that might be, uh, that will be worth planning and announcing it because that could cut connection during one or two minutes. But if it, the, the goal is to add this to the current log, so we are really, really sure that we don't have any block. Hervé, do you think you will be able to work on it during the upcoming milestone? Yes. Okay. Is that okay for you to take the issue or do you want to someone else to work on it? Uh, either I way have you... already uh, assigned myself on it, I think. Okay, cool. So I will add it to the new milestone. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, next one. Mirror Jenkins CI org is missing some necessary metadata file which prevent it from being added as an APT Yum repo. I forgot to uh, pass the link, but that will update. Um, I wanted to mention this one because we told the user who will delay. So right now this issue is blocked because we need to mi first migrate PKG origin somewhere else. And the part about the, the YUM repo is complicated because we need to be able to provide a, a CDN for the packages inside China and other networks. And there is an issue related to the, uh, the amount of data that is stored on the mirrors. We have archives Jenkins IO right now as a, that will that acts as a default fallback. But it seems that the APT Yum repo pattern that we use only have indexes on the top level domain, not on the mirror uh, domain. So there might be some elements such as mirroring, allowing the mirrors of the packages, uh, of the package indexes. But that problem is the same as the update center. It means that these indexes must be updated almost immediately when we change them due to a security release like tomorrow. That's why Olivier never went that road. So that issue is blocked by the work that everybody is doing on updates Jenkins IO. Because that means if we can have our own instance of update slash package with a mirror redirector system that we control, then we will solve that issue easily. And we can also put the package indexes on a bucket somewhere else with a redirection and keep the big packages.deb.rpm on the get Jenkins IO mirror system. So that one, I will add a comment and I will put it back on the, uh, the not the current milestone, but the infra team sync next because it's blocked by migrating PKG and update to somewhere else and start the redirection to provide to China. There is two requirements here, but at least I want the user to know that we are working on this topic. Okay, for everyone. Uh, comment that it's blocked by the update. Uh, garbage collector. Uh, I don't think I will be able to work on it. I don't know for you folks. I don't think it's uh, it's. I think it's a low priority issue. Okay. It's less than ten dollars per month. So. Good for me. No objection. Stefan uh, proposal. It, it yep. Just it made me think about the. With the edge build, uh, we enabled back the spot instance. 
you might want to add a garbage collector for kicking out uh, uh, these uh, Azure VM if they are more than uh, yep. 24 hours long. Good point. Um, do you mind adding a comment on the ATH uh, issue that James sure. opened? So yeah. one, next week when we will check the feedback of the one week without spot, if we want to persist them, we will have a message to remind us that we need to implement the garbage collector along with that change. Is that okay yeah. for you? And from now we need daily to check if there is some some VM still yep. up that, because we changed the spot. So we need to remember remember that. Yeah, but worst case we can wait end of the week and and change them. The impact on one week is almost is low. I can't say it's nothing, but it's low. But yeah, good point. Good point on both. You you are volunteers, both of you. You mentioned the topic. <laughs> That's a gift. <laughs> You're so nice. Um, I'm adding a note. It was ATH. ATH, ATH. Let's work on a GC VM to be removed. I've added a note also on um, the team, on the weekly uh, yeah. meeting. I, I commented on the issue. Cool, thanks. Next one, the two next one are uh, topics for Stefan. Yes. Since you're back from vacation, the topics is related to ARM64. Um, so the main, the primary topic is check which services can be migrated like Javadoc to the RM64 node pool to decrease the cost, the operational cost of the cluster. So you have to put your hands back on the subject, write things down, share with the team and work on it if you have if you have located services, including announcement, validation, etc. And the second one is uh, working on the node toleration and taints. So we improve the way we we give tips and int to the Kubernetes scheduler when we move the, um, uh, when we define the services. The main challenge is to be sure that we can have two node pools of the same kind, but different names. So we can drain the first one with a manual operation and then remove it. The, um, what happened during the cluster deletion two weeks ago, shows that, yeah, that will be really useful in this kind of situation that to allow us moving not pools by not pools and not all not pools at once like I did. So that one will be useful even if a bit more, a bit less priority than the IRM64 migration. Good. So that means, Stefan, I'm adding these two on the milestone. And once you have a fully working laptop and not before, you can start putting your hands to remember, take notes and act on this one. That might have to wait next milestone, no problem on that. Thank you. Um, the, uh, just last one uh, before the IP restriction. A Kubernetes cluster defined in Fry CI admin SVC account as code. That's an issue I opened. Consequence of the Kubernetes 1.25. Um, I realized that I never shared the shell script when we create a brand new cluster, Kubernetes cluster. We need a technical user which has administration permission so that we can have infra CI Jenkins IO installing and managing charts as administrator of the cluster. That one was most of the time created manually by someone named Damien Duportal with a, a dark and shadow shell script on his machine. So the goal of that issue is that that one should be done by Terraform when Terraform create a cluster once the cluster is created it should create the account and prepare a sensitive output that we can immediately put in infra CI. So that's quite an easy one. Um, yeah, uh, I've almost finished my proof of concept, so that should be good for this milestone. The last one, remove IP restriction on bounds or migrate to VPN. So that one is the, a way for me to assess a topic 
that we don't have issue about, which is pretty important. We need to get rid of the old overlapped networks. We did the heavy work, mostly RV, <laughs> um, and the subnet that was overlapping okay. and creating the issue has been deleted during the past two weeks as part of the Kubernetes 1.25 and the cleanups. However, we still have two services that we identify that are running inside the whole net public whatever network. One is VPN Jenkins IO. It's easy. We just want to get rid of that service and forget about it. So remove the virtual machine, the code, and etc. We still need to clean up resources. So an issue is required for removing that service. And search that CI Jenkins IO which is the Jenkins controller used by the Jenkins security team. I chose to defer the deletion of this one because of the security released for tomorrow, because they require that controller to be able to work. That's why we didn't work on this two weeks ago. So now once they will have done the security release, if we don't have any security release even privately shared with them in the upcoming two weeks, then we can migrate certs.ci to the new network and clean up all the resources of the old network. We, that, we agree that what you're talking about have nothing to say with that issue. It has. <laughs> okay. And uh, let me explain. So let me just write down that I need to create three issues. Delete VPN Jenkins IO resources. Um, move cert.ci to the new private network. And then delete all remnants of the old overlap networks. The reason is because that issue is about trusted CI which is in its own virtual network, brand new somewhere, which is not the new, not the public private that we have today, not another one. And the fact that we want to restrict the access to the SSH and to that trusted CI, we have the same pattern for third CI. The restriction is not the same. We don't have the same person on both services. We have an overlap. Daniel Beck or Vadek need to reach both but not every member of the GenSec team need to reach trusted and not everyone from the infra team or at least our usual contributor uh, should reach third CA. So they need either a separated subnet inside private network or their own virtual net. In any case, today third CI users reach third CI using the VPN. So that's the subsequent topic. We need the same method in any case to reach trusted and search CI. And that same method should have two access control lists that say, oh, you are that user, you can access both or one or the other. VPN so the, looks the like VPN. the same one, but that's the same method. Um, what is hidden is that we need to select a method that will work for both. So that means third CI should have the same paradigm at the network level than trusted, which means their own virtual network and eventually not a subnet. And we peer the network to the private network. Does it make sense now with that explanation in mind? Thank you. Uh, I've mentioned it somewhere on the issue. So we need to work on that one as well. Proposal is that I will start working with you folks on this one before working on the free upcoming issues. Because first we need to validate the peering ports. So if it doesn't work for trusted, we won't repeat the same mistake for third CI. Any question, objection, things to clarify on that topic? Nope, okay. Do we have new other issues or new other topic? I'm looking at the new issues. Okay, I need to remove tray edge on this too, but outside this, no new issues. Do you have other topics? None from me. 
Any question, thing you want to say? Cool, so I'm stopping the screen share. I'm stopping the recording for people watching us. See you next week. Bye-bye.